Water, also known to some as dihydrogen monoxide, it is essential to life on Earth. We could not live without it. In fact, we are anywhere from 55 to 78 percent water. Water covers about 70 percent of the Earth's surface, but only 3 percent of it is drinkable. The rest is all seawater, which is about as healthy for you as drinking Coca-Cola. Of the 3% we can drink without dying, only 0.3% of it is at the surface. Most of it is either underground coming up in springs or wells for us to drink. The rest are at the polar ice caps, frozen away from mankind. Of that surface water we can drink, 87% is found in lakes. Even with this very, very small amount, it has nurtured human development since before the Ice Age. In this ancient empire of Mesopotamia, they wouldn't have existed without the Euphrates and Tigris River. The same goes for Egypt, relying solely on the Nile River to give them water and fertilize their crops. The Greeks and Romans relied on small rivers to help them travel and grow crops. All this water weighs about 1.4 quintillion metric tons, or 3 sextillion 87 quintillion pounds. That's a lot of water, and a good portion of it is found right above your heads. Water cannot conduct electricity very well. In fact, when I hook up these wires to a battery and put them into water, the light bulb won't even glow. Same happens with salt. When I dissolve the salt in water, it acts as a conductor, lighting up the bulb. This can't work well with the ocean, seeing that it's only 3.5% salt. That's right, only 3.5%. So when you stick the wires in the ocean, the bulb would only glow dully, not shine bright. The Mickey Mouse shaped molecule of water only exists because of covalent bonds, where hydrogen shares one of their electrons with oxygen. Oxygen has six outer electrons and needs eight in order to be stable, according to the octet rule. Hydrogen wants one more to be stable, therefore hydrogen share their electron with oxygen, and oxygen shares two of its electrons with hydrogen, making them both stable. The angle at which hydrogen attaches to oxygen is 104.5 degrees, which actually made the Earth look as we know it today. You see, the mouse ears on top generate a positive charge due to their lack of electrons, and oxygen generates a negative charge because oxygen is usually a negative atom. When another molecule comes near it, it slides right onto the mouse ears due to attraction and sits on top of the ears. This happens to another on top of that one and another and another, until you have the chilly crystal lattice structure we know as ice. If the hydrogen molecules were out to the side like this, then water would not be able to freeze at zero degrees Celsius. It would freeze at a much, much lower point, say, around negative 100 degrees Celsius. Water also has a weird property of floating in itself as a solid. This is because once water reaches 4 degrees Celsius, it begins to expand and lose weight. This is very beneficial to life on Earth because if ice sunk, there would be mass global flooding, huge ecological changes, and all polar bears, penguins, and any other polar creature would be extinct. The Earth's temperatures would rise highly without ice to cool it down or reflect sunlight and the oceans would be diluted, leading to a mass aquatic extinction. Good thing ice floats. Water also has a skin on it that you can see for yourself. Get a small paper clip and place it on the surface of water. It won't sink. That's because water also has something called surface tension, which means that the water on top can support weight, like this insect or this lizard. It is so because in a glass of water, Every molecule inside has other molecules pulling against it, causing it not to move. At the surface, the molecules stretch the water to the sides and down, so it can cause a thin, tight layer of water molecules that some insects and lizards can walk on. Surface tension leads to another remarkable property, that it can sit on a superheated surface without boiling. This is called the Leiden frost effect. This effect happens when water sits on a superheated surface but doesn't evaporate. This happens because of a microscopic layer of steam keeping the water afloat above the surface. As you can see when I take this little bit of water and I pour it into the pan, it starts to boil rapidly and then it creates a little layer of steam. So now these droplets of water, are, um, they are free to roam around like this without evaporating as long as the pan has been heated to above 250 degrees Celsius, which is the definition of superheated. Water, in my opinion, is the most overlooked molecule. It seems so common that no one gives it a second thought. So next time you go to drink a glass of water, don't take it for granted. Subscribe!